everyone. This is our penultimate packet, right? So one more after this, okay? Hopefully you're looking at this on Monday of uh, week eight. All right, so bottom line is we saw how to do a Lewis structure in the last packet, right? Okay, now, as you probably know, when you <laughs> write on a flat piece of paper, that's by definition a two-dimensional shape, right? But it turns out that molecules have three-dimensional shapes, so we have to somehow come up with a way of turning a flat kind of picture on a page into a three-dimensional kind of model or shape. Okay, and this is super important because when it comes to drugs and enzymes and things like that, it's not really the chemistry, it's not whether it has an OH or whatever groups on there, right? It's really its shape, so it's that whole molecular recognition thing for drugs, so it's like locks and keys, so it's more the shape of the molecule that's important. So we need to be able to work out the shape, okay? So that's what this packet's pretty much all about. Determining molecular shape or molecular geometry, right? Okay, <laughs> it's got a big old name. <laughs> it's very simple, but of course it's wrapped up in jargon, right? So it's called VSEPR theory, which stands for valence shell. Well, that makes sense because all the electrons in the Lewis structure are valence electrons, right? <laughs> okay. Electron pair, well, they travel in pairs, right? Either lone pairs or bonded pairs, so sticks or lone pairs, right? And then repulsion theory, so that's kind of the new thing on the back. It's kind of a common sense thing, but if you think about it, electron pairs, be them lone pairs or bonded pairs, are just clumps, and that's what I call this theory, the clumps theory. <laughs> yeah, the clumps theory, right? So an electron pair is a clump of negative charge, and clumps of negative charge repel one another, and it's that easy, okay? So all we've got to do is think about how would two, three, four, how would a certain number of clumps arrange themselves around a center atom in three dimensions, and that'll be the electronic shape, okay? Now, that's kind of summarized down here. All right, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna explore the theory a little bit in the next few pages, then kind of come back and fill in some details. So if it's two clumps around center, we get a linear molecule, three clumps, trigonal planar, and then we get into three-dimensional shapes down here, okay? So we took look at these shapes kind of you know, one by one and uh, look at details. All right, so first things first, let's talk about the clumps theory, okay? So the clumps theory, or VSEPR, if you want to kind of use this technical name, as I mentioned, it's all about clumps of negative charge repelling as far away from each other as possible, okay? Now the best way to do this is to do an analogy, right? So I like to think of ancient Rome, and there's a kind of a, a still from a movie, right? The Gladiator movie, which is kind of cool, all right? So imagine, you know, we live back in the day of ancient Rome, and you remember those Romans, bloodthirsty lot, right? So they uh, kept the mob happy by <laughs> the Colosseum, right? So they put people to death in entertaining ways just to keep people kind of from writing, right? Okay. Now imagine we're in ancient Rome and it's chemist day. We're going to kill a few chemists, right? Why not, right? So what they do, just to make it fun, they put a big stick in the ground, right? And that's a bit like center atom. So I'm going to do CO2 as an example, right? So that's like carbon and carbon dioxide, right? And then, this is important, they have kind of a metal ring there which can rotate, and we'll see why in a second, and then a rope, right? And you attach that to your unlucky chemist. That's like oxygen, and it's CO2, so that's a double bond, right? We saw that before. Okay, fair enough. Now, what do they do for entertainment? Well, they get another ring, and another rope, and I'm very bad at drawing stuff, right? So this is something very dangerous. That's my best go at a Nile crocodile, right? <laughs> okay, so there's another bond, another atom. Now, there are, of course, lone pairs on those outside atoms, but they don't affect the shape, okay? So lone pairs on outside atoms have nothing to do with shape. It's just how many clumps around center. Now, don't get confused. A single bond, a double bond, a triple bond, a lone pair, they're just clumps of negative, right? So just kind of think of them all as the same thing, a clump of negative charge. Now, let's think about this, right? So here's the crocodile, and here's me, right? I've been working on aerobic fitness, yeah? So. If the crocodile goes that way, I'm repelled by the crocodile, so I go that way, right? So if I'm keeping as far away from the crocodile as possible by rotating around that center atom or that stick, yeah, that center pole, kind of reminds me of episode two from Star Wars, right? <laughs> okay. What's that bond angle always? So what's the bond angle between O, C, and O? Well, if it's as far away as possible, it's like a clock and it's 
quarter to three, right? So the electron clumps have repelled as far away as possible in the molecule, and that bond angle is 180 degrees. Okay, so if I have two clumps sitting around a center atom, think of them as, you know, the, the hands on a watch, right? Okay, what's as far apart as they can be? 180, right? Quarter to three. Okay, so there it is. Okay, so if I have two clumps, and let's go back to the picture. Those are electron domains, they call them. Those are clumps, right? So one, two clumps. In the CO2 example, they were double bonds, but in like HCN, it'll be a single and a triple, right? So if there's two clumps, doesn't matter how thick the clump is, right? Two clumps repel 180 degrees. This is, so they have what we call linear geometry, right? So two things. <laughs> 180 degrees, okay. So two clumps, that's all you gotta remember, right? So this front sheet is gonna be super important just to remember the shape, yeah, but you can kind of figure it out. So two clumps repel 180, fair enough. All right, now, <laughs> let's say I've been working on my aerobic fitness, right? And this kind of reminds me of the life of Brian. <laughs> so just keep running away, right? Keep running away. <laughs> Eventually the crocodile will drop dead of a heart attack, right? Or just get tired, <laughs> all right? So let's say now, now the Romans are pissed, right? So they didn't get to kill their chemist. So let's make it more interesting, right? So now we're going to have something like CH2O. And we've seen that one before too, okay? All right. So CH2O, remember we had center atom as carbon, right? Okay. So let's actually draw it on the side here. Okay. So CH2O, we drew it like this before, didn't we? And I said, well, let's just naturally kind of spread these out. And you did that intuitively for a reason, right? So let's pretend we're back in Rome. Okay, so here is the center atom, which is going to be carbon, right? Okay. Then, what do we got? Well, the Romans will not be outdone, right? So they bring back the chemist. All right. That might be the double on the O, say, right? Okay. And then they bring out a fresh crocodile. All right, and something super dangerous. I'm not sure what this is. It's in there, but it's weird and pissed off, whatever it is. I'm not sure what it is, but it's dangerous. <laughs> it's a bit weird and it's a bit pissed off. All right, <laughs> so now let's think about it. Let's pretend all three of us had a chat backstage, right? And say, hey, look, just stay away from each other and this will just go away, right? So if you look at it from the top, yeah, so there's the center atom. Oh, there's the oxygen. If they spread out as far as they can, there's three clumps, right? One, two, three, single, single, double bond, right? Okay. What does it look like from the top? Well, if I have three things in a plane, yeah, and they spread out equally, that bond angle is 120 degrees in each case. Okay, so if I have three clumps, everyone's on ground level, so it's said to be planar, but there's three clumps that spread out like a triangle, so we say it's trigonal planar. So there it is, right? So if I have three clumps, in my example, I had a double bond, single bond, single bond, again, doesn't matter how thick the clumps are, just count them. Three clumps, trigonal planar, that bond angle is 120. Fantastic, fantastic. Now, <clears throat> that one and that one. Now, when we looked at SO4, oh, when we looked at SO4 2 minus, and it works just the same as CH4, which we'll do in a second, which is a little easier to understand, right? In this case, we actually do something interesting because we now, actually, if I go back to CH4, right, real quick, when you draw CH4, or even, let's do it as well, all right, so both of these have SO4, we saw that structure before, CH4, we've probably seen that structure before, right? When you look at on the flat page, that angle is 90, right? And if they kind of repelled it in a flat page to as far as they could go, yeah, 90 degrees, it looks like a cross, right? However, let me pull you out this one. Now, later on, in fact, in our next lab, which is tomorrow for you guys, right? Okay, we're gonna be making molecular models and you can use the modeling kit and the holes are kind of drilled in the right spot. So this is carbon, right? Carbon has four sticks. This is like its 
easy, right? So when, when I do this tomorrow, I'll make a bunch of easies, right? So carbon, instead of having the flat four and across, it actually looks more like a tripod. Now, if you look at that, if I hold that up to the page like that, that angle there, when we have like a tripod, is actually greater than 90 degrees. It's 109 and a half degrees, right? So it actually looks, that comes out of the page, that goes back into the page, right? That's 109. So when I have four clumps, we break into 3D, right? We break into the third dimension. We're not flat anymore. We have a three-dimensional shape. Kind of looks like a tripod. And on this tripod, the bond angle is increased. That means it's more stable, right? Because they get as far away from each other as possible. Hey, bond angles, 109, four clumps. Hmm, we use tetra, if you remember that, right? So carbon tetrachloride, remember tetra for four, right? We actually call that shape with four clumps pointing in different directions a tetrahedron, right? So if I look here, tetrahedron. Now, if you took chemistry 101, sorry, if you took chemistry 100, we stopped there. We did some more, like, more complex shapes as we go. But for now, let's just pause at the tetrahedron. So four clumps, four different directions. That bond angle is 109 and a half, not 90, 109 and a half, okay? So that's our simple shapes to get started, right? So we have linear, and these are electronic shapes because I'm looking where the clumps are. So electronically, that's linear. So two electron clumps, two domains, they call it linear. Three clumps, trigonal planar, flat triangle. Four clumps, tetrahedron. Got it. All right. Now, <clears throat> obviously I can't go into 3D on my, uh, my Roman model. So, you know, you've got to think about a tripod rather than a cross, if that makes sense. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so that's the first three simple electronic shapes, all right? Okay, now we're going to get into the nuts and bolts a little bit, okay, because the kind of the weird thing that messes things up occasionally is lone pairs. Because if you think about it, lone pairs are clumps of negative charge. They're just pairs of electrons that don't make bonds to atoms, okay. And then we have a kind of a slight deviation sometimes between electronic shape and what we call molecular shape, okay. So molecular shape is where the atoms are relative to the center. Electronic shape is where the clumps are relative to the center. Oftentimes it's the same because there's an atom on the end of each clump. We call that a bond, right? So if you think about it, if my hand was an atom and my arm was an electron pair, a bond pair, where the clump goes, the atom goes, right? So it's the same shape, molecular and electronic, but that's not always true, okay? And they have a classic example in the book, okay? So we talk about bonded pairs, which we'll call X in our generic kind of description, and lone pairs, which we call E. So there's two kinds of domain, two types of clump bonded and lone pair electron clumps, all right? Okay, now they're all repelled because they're all negative. Okay, so what we're gonna do, and I want you to kind of uh, pay close attention to this because it's a very popular question with examiners, okay? We're gonna look at three molecules. Each of them has exactly the same electronic shape because four clumps, right? However, as we go down the line here, the number of lone pairs increases, so that changes what we call the molecular shape, okay? So, number of clumps. If you like, we can just do the simple diagram, right? So CH4, just on the page here, right? CH4, NH3 looks like that. And then water, if you remember, I'll draw it like this. That's the flat picture, right? So what is the number of clumps in each case? Four, four bonds, three bonds and a lone pair. That's still a clump, right? Two bonds, two lone pairs, right? Now in our terminology, that's an AX4 system because each of the clumps is a bond, right? This is an A, can you tell me? X3 E1 system. Three bonds, one lone pair. Here, you tell me, A, X, what? Two, E, two. Fair enough. Now, the electronic shape is always gonna be the same, right? In each case, we have one, two, three, four clumps. One, two, three, four clumps. One, two, three, four clumps. So the electrons will repel as far away as they can with four clumps, which is always the same shape, right? Four clumps, there they are, tetrahedral. So the electronic shape in each case is tetrahedral. 
Now in all our previous examples, the electronic shape was also the molecular shape. Okay? Now be careful, because when they ask you shape in the test, they really want where the atoms are relative to each other. So if you think about it, you can't really see electrons with a microscope, but you can see kind of where the atoms are, right? Okay? So molecular shape, or just shape, it's going to be different this time. In this case, we have those hidden clumps, if you like, those lone pairs, right? Okay. So we saw methane already. Now there's my model, right? What I'll do, and again, this kind of is a nice warm up for uh, nice warm up. Oop. Sorry, <laughs> nice warm up for your lab, right? So there it is, right? So there's my tetrahedral, right? So if I kind of try and draw this in 3D, I've got carbon, hydrogen. So you always draw these two in plane, yeah? And then this one's coming out of plane, right? Boom, out of plane you go. And then that other one goes back into the page, if you like. So there it is, and that's 109, right? Oh, 109. So obviously it's a bigger bond angle than on, in 2D, so it's a three-dimensional shape. So there's an atom on the end of each clump, therefore it's the same molecular shape. If I kind of dot to dot the atoms to the center, hey, it's the same shape as the bonds to the center because there's an atom on the end of each bond. It's just like me saying, hey, where does my hand go? It goes where my arm goes, right? Because it's stuck on the end. Fair enough. Now, if I pull out Ammonia. Now you've got to be careful with ammonia, right? Okay. This is its EZ Lewis, right? So if I do ammonia, how do we do a lone pair? Well, it's represented by like a paddle, so that's kind of an orbital with two electrons in it, right? Then I've got my three sticks, so it just looks like it's EZ, right? It's got three sticks and a lone pair. That's ammonia, right? There it is, three sticks and a lone pair. But hey, it's a three dimensional shape. It's got four clumps, so it's got, if I kind of draw that up, draw it in the same way, okay, if I just put some hydrogens on the end of those sticks, now here's the key thing, so electronically, yes, it's got one, two, three, four clumps, fantastic, right? But molecular shape, I can't see this. And this is the great thing about the modeling kit. You can just pluck off the wings of the butterfly, right? So that's my new shape. If I'm just joining the dots of where the atoms are, look at this. From the top, it looks like a triangle, right? From the top, it looks like a triangle. But it's not flat, so it's not trigonal planar. Think of those things on the Giza Plateau pyramids, right? So it's like raised up like a tent, right? So we actually call that shape, and there it is kind of raised up. We call that shape trigonal pyramid, okay? So when I have four clumps, one is not bonded, and AX3E1, that's trigonal pyramid. All right, okay. The great thing about the models is you can remove the lone pair is to look at the difference between electronic shape, four clumps, tetrahedral, and molecular shape, true molecular shape, join the dots for the atoms top trigonal side pyramid. Okay. All right. See if you can figure out what water's doing. Okay. Again, in each case, the bond angle is 109 because the bond angle depends on the underlying electronic shape. Okay. All right. If I do water, here's the water EZ, if you like. It's got two sticks, two lone pairs. That's its kind of model EZ, right? Okay. Put two hydrogens on the back. There we go. Now, I'll do it again, right? So in this case, I'll kind of have the lone pairs up and to the side, right? So there's oxygen. Got a lone pair and a lone pair. They're kind of pointing up and to the side, and I got hydrogen coming out of the plane, hydrogen going back in the plane. Okay, so yeah. Electronically, four clumps, tetrahedral. Pull the wings off the butterfly. Boom, what have I got? It's just three atoms not in a straight line. Straight line we called linear. Guess what? Three atoms not in a straight line. 
Nonlinear. Okay, so that's nonlinear. Non linear. Now there's lots of nonlinear molecules out there, but sometimes you know the bond angle is different. That bond angle there in water is 109 and a half, right? Because it's based off that underlying electronic shape, right? So underlying that were four clumps which pushed out to as far apart as they could be 109. We just can't see the other two, right? Okay. If I put them on real quick, the bond angle between a clump and a bond is 109, bond angle between two clumps, 109, two atoms, 109, right? Okay. So it's called nonlinear. For carbon dioxide, and here's one I prepared earlier, right? Carbon dioxide has three atoms in a straight line, right, as we saw in the previous example, so that's 180, that's linear, right? Carbon dioxide is linear, okay? So that's kind of interesting, all right? So when you have a Lewis structure and there's one or more lone pairs around center, one and two in water and ammonia, right? The electronic shape and the molecular shape will be different. Okay, all right, that's kind of fun. Now, <laughs> ultimately, of course, there's a, <laughs> a table, right? So, you know, there's only so many combinations for each number of clumps, right? Okay, so as we saw before, let's just go through a couple, right? Okay, so for two clumps, we can have only linear, right? Okay, now that's CO2, but I could also have maybe HCN, right? Which is like a triple bond in a single. Double, double, single, triple, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter because it's just the number of clumps, right? Doesn't matter how thick they are, okay? Now we did for three clumps, right? So for three clumps, they can be no lone pairs, Fantastic. That's like we had before, right? So before we had C H two O, three clumps repelling. There's one BF three, very similar. So BF three C H two O, similar. Now here's one from uh, kind of flashback, right? If you remember S O two, okay, we did that one. I think with our partially expanded octet for sulfur. There's one, two, three clumps around there, right? There's three clumps around there but that's kind of hidden. So is that molecule linear? No, that is a badly drawn picture. It's actually because there's a lone pair there and they're repelling. Those angles are all 120, right? So that's a non-linear molecule with a bond angle of 120 because there's three clumps. When we looked at water, that was a non-linear with 109 because the underlying electronic shape was tetrahedral. Okay, let me get into the tetrahedrals. Those are the three classics, we just did them, okay? So we have tetrahedral molecular shape for methane, CH4, trigonal pyramid for ammonia, if you like, there's hidden lone pairs there. And then, this is how they draw it in the book, right? It's terrible how they draw these in the book, there's no kind of 3D perspective sometimes, but it looks obviously like that. Those are the lone pairs. That's 109. In each case, the bond angles are 109 and a half because it's based on tetrahedral symmetry. Okay, now, <laughs> when we get to those uh, more complex shapes, right? So, back to the front. We're up to here, we've done four clumps, right? So there's five and six, yeah? Five is called trigonal by pyramid, six is called octahedral. All right, so let's just see that with a picture, yeah? Okay, now, so six clumps. When I have six clumps, how far can they be maximum, right? Well, it's kind of interesting. So we have the center atom, we have a north and the south pole kind of thing. So I like to think about poles like the Earth, right? And then around the equator, we have four. Okay, so the bond angles are interesting, right? So, it's a bad drawing. The bond angle there is 90, isn't it? So it's 90 around the center because it's like a cross, right? Okay, and then that angle there is 180, all right? So it kind of shows it better in the picture, all right? There's octahedral. So north and south is a bond angle of 180, and then 90 is around, you know, it can be any of the right angles if you like in the picture, okay? So that's six slumps, yeah, fair enough, all right? Now, that might be, for example, S, F, 6, something like that, okay? <clears throat> now, what would happen if I removed one of those clumps, right? Well, it's interesting. It, it turns out the north and south go, right? So if I have P, C, L, 5, for example, that's not a good example. 
<laughs> okay. If I have the center, and then I have a clump there. All right. The cross stays, and that's pointing down. Okay. I've kind of drawn it upside down, right? Because if I draw it right side up, and then join the dots, it kind of looks like a regular square bottomed pyramid, doesn't it? Right? Okay. So if I have six clumps, but one's hidden. So if I go back here, that's an A, X, 6, that's an A, X, 5, E, 1, right? In an A, X, 5, E, 1, one hidden clump, it's, it almost looks like if I flip it upside down, it's got a square base and then it's got like a tent, so it's like a pyramid. That's actually called square pyramid, okay? So, <clears throat> square pyramid, okay? If you look on your note packet, move it up so you can see. So square pyramid and oh the first one I forgot to mention first one is octahedral right so if I actually draw that it's like two two pyramids <coughs> two pyramids back to back and there's eight sides to that three-dimensional shape so that's called octahedral okay so an AX6 is octahedral an AX5E1 I can't see that lone pair so it's now that right it looks like a regular pyramid, square pyramid. Okay. Now I can only do one more removal. I can take out the bottom, all right? And I get, might be X, E, F, 4. We did that one before, right? That's an A, X, 4, E, 2. That is a square, flat square, right? So it's a planar square, so square planar. Square planar, all right. Octahedral, AX6, six regular bonds, right? AX5E1, six clumps, just like before, but one of them's a lone pair. Square pyramid. Two clumps, four bonds, if you like, four clumps. Four clumps that are bonded, two clumps that are non-bonded, six clumps all together, AX4E2, square planar. Okay, and there's the names there. Okay, now, when it gets on to, uh, five clumps, it gets even more interesting, okay? So five clumps, so if I do five clumps, same again, this is your PCL5, right? So that's an A, X, 5, E, G, P, C, L, 5, right? So I've got center atom, a north and the south, and then three around the equator, not uh, four like before, right? So if you think about it, that bond angle is 180, and that, just, it's a flat triangle in there, so that's a 120. Okay, and we see that down here. So we call that trigonal by pyramid because it looks like a, a triangle based pyramid, right? And then it's flipped top and bottom, so it's trigonal by pyramid. Trigonal by pyramid. Okay, interesting. So the five clumps are interesting. All right, next one. Now, interesting, unlike the previous example where I took them off the north and south, I actually take them off the equator in this case, right? So I'm gonna lie this thing down, <laughs> like that, all right? And there are my two, and then this one is the lone pair, right? So I took that one off, right? Okay, that's an AX4E1, and that's called a seesaw or a teeter-totter, right? Because it looks like a seesaw, doesn't it? So imagine some kind of, you know, American child and some kind of Norwegian child there sitting on the seesaw. Right? That's a joke, right? So that's what they call seesaw or teeter-totter, right? That's a more familiar term, perhaps. Next one. I'm about to run out of time, but I think I'm going to make it. If I take one more out. Oh, literally a minute left, right? If I take one more out, it's an AX3E2. That's a T shape, okay? And finally, one more. So there's lone pairs like that. One more. Three lone pairs around the middle. That's linear with a 180 degree bond angle. I3 minus is a classic, okay? And there they are. So I remove one from the, around the waist, two from around, so same, none. One, two, and three removed from around the waist. We go seesaw, T-shaped, and linear. I'm literally about to run out of time, so we'll pause there, come back in a second. So just a quick recap there. When we have six clumps, we lose the north and south, okay? So we go from octahedral, which is six bonds, if you like, molecular shape, five bonds and a 
hidden pair, square pyramid. It's kind of upside down like I drew it, right? But imagine a square pyramid. And then just square planar if I lose north and south, right? So AX6, AX5E1, AX4E2, okay? When I have five clumps, that might be PCL5, for example, right? So I have a north and a south, it's kind of a bad picture, and then three around the equator, right? I lose equatorials, not north and south. So then I lose one, it looks like a seesaw. I lose two, it looks like a T. I lose three, it's gone linear. And that's a classic, I3 minus is a classic AX2E3 system. Okay. All right, so be familiar with those weird shapes. All right. Now let's practice, right? Okay. So what we're going to do, we know how to do Lewis structures, yeah? And if you want to flip back, you can, right? If you want to flip back, you can. We've done this before, okay? But I'd really like you to try and do this kind of from scratch if you can, all right? So first one, AX, sorry, <laughs> XEF4. XEF4, if we think about it, right? So we had 5S, 5P, 5D. Because xenon in its ground state has no unpaired electrons, right? So 5S and 5P are all, are all paired up, right? If I want four bonds, I've got to promote two, right? So cut to the chase a little bit. Right. I'm going to promote one and two. So that gives me four unpaired electrons and then two kind of lone pairs. It's important, right? So that's, think about it now, think about it, right? So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six clumps. So it's going to have that underlying kind of octahedral symmetry, but hey, two of those clumps are going to be hidden and that's going to be the two equatorial positions, right? So if I draw that as a kind of a 3D easy if that makes sense. It's going to look like that. Okay, and then just fill in the outside. So we did that one before. There it is again. Okay, now what's the shape, right? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six clumps, right? But, can't see two of them. So the electronic shape, yes, octahedral. Molecular shape, square planar. It's like those are the lone pairs, those are fluorines, right? Square planar. Okay, now NO2, we did that one earlier too, right? So NO2, all right. If you remember NO2, it had a couple of resonance forms. We'll draw one of them. The key thing with NO2 is three clumps. Hey, it's like half thick single clump. It's still a clump though, right? So that's three clumps around center. So the electronic shape is going to be trigonal planar. And then if I draw it correctly, that's going to be a 120 degree bond angle, right? Because that's repelling. So it's a nonlinear, three atoms, oh, three atoms not in a straight line, nonlinear, one train degree, 120 degree bond angle. Okay, we'd see the same thing for ozone too. Remember ozone and NO2 are somewhat similar. Okay. All right. <laughs> Next one. All right. So let's make it extra credit. This one's a giant test, right? If you can do this one, and I set this for kind of group work in the regular semester, so give it a go, right? Okay. The chlorate ion. I have a fully expanded chlorine, okay? So what I want you to do is think about chlorine. And I'll give you the star, right? So chlorine is here, so it's in the one, two, third row, right? So if I do the chlorine, it's got that neon core, and then 3S, 3P, 3D. Ground state is this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I fully expand that thing, right, if I fully expand that thing, I can promote one, two, three electrons, right? So the full expanded chlorine, when bonded to oxygen or fluorine or both, right, looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
seven unpaired electrons. So when I think about it's EZ, it's going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sticks. Now those sticks can be singles, doubles, etc. Right? And when you do the model, you'll, that'll make sense, right? Okay. So what you got to do, and if you remember my trick from formal charge, right? You got to do ClO4 minus. It's a minus one ion. So think about numbers of single and double bonds then for outside oxygens. Okay. So do me like it says here. Draw the Lewis structures because there's going to be a bunch of Lewis forms, right? For the chlorate ion, okay? Once you got it down, and you got the Lewis, right? So do the, the various Lewis resonance forms, and then for one of them, just tell me what its shape is, right? And we're gonna assume a massively super expanded octet for chlorine. It's gonna have seven sticks around center, okay? Again, some of them double, some of them single, right? Okay, all right, try that. We'll make this uh, due on Tuesday, all right? All right, <clears throat> so we keep going. <laughs> okay, now, in my opinion, this is a little bit beyond the scope of Chemistry 101, so I'm going to have you kind of just cover the bases in terms of the syllabus, and I want you just to read about it in the book, okay? There's something called molecular orbital theory. It turns out that when we do the wave model for molecules, it kind of carries over, so if an atom has two molecular orbitals, right? A 1s and a 2s, for example, two molecular orbitals. When it's bonded, the molecule will also have two orbitals, but they're called molecular. So it's a map, a wave map of where electrons are in molecules, but the number of orbitals is the same total number, right? So if I stick two atoms together, both contribute one atomic orbital each, the molecule will have two molecular orbitals, right? And you can read about that in the book, all right? But to be honest, in practical terms, in practical terms, there's a much, much, much easier way to think about it, right? Okay, and this is what I call, and it's one of those rare keys and tricks, right? This is the organic chemist trick. If you look at a, an atom in a Lewis structure, you can tell it's quote unquote hybridization, or it's bonding around it, just by looking at the dots and sticks, okay? So here's the trick. An easy way to determine hybridization of an atom is simply to count the clumps around the atom, right? So you have an atom in a structure, just look at it locally. What is it, what's it got around it, all right? Has it got two single bonds? That's two clumps, right? Has it got three single bonds? That's three clumps, right? And that'll tell you the hybridization, okay? So remember, a clump is either a single bond, a double bond, a triple bond, or a lone pair, right? So we're counting lone pairs as clumps in a molecule, okay? That directly relates to hybridization. Now, in terms of <clears throat> a picture, right? I got this one here, yeah, okay, so I'll just kind of redo it nicely, right? So I've got C, 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 O, Let's talk about it, right? So I have this carbon atom here, yeah? This carbon atom here has four sticks, right? So this one here, four clumps. Now I mentioned, hey, for every atomic orbital used, there's a molecular orbital, and those molecular orbitals are called hybrids, right? So if I'm combining four clumps, I'm combining a, an S orbital with three P's. That's the trick, right? So I've got one S and three P's. If you like, there's a one there. They never write the one, but it's there, right? So one S and three P's, three and one makes four, four clumps. That's the trick. If you see one, two, three, four clumps around center atom, it's SP3. If I do ammonia for a, a quick second here, What's the hybridization of nitrogen in there? It's also sp3 because that's a clump, right? Ah, okay. So four clumps, that's the trick. That's the organic chemistry trick. Four clumps is sp3, okay? Four clumps, sp3, all right? If I draw an easy Lewis, typically for carbon we talk about, nitrogen will be that, but four clumps, right? Okay, we'll talk about other things in a second. So what do we typically see? For carbon, we see four sticks. 
okay? Each stick is what we call a pi bond. So a single stick, there's one there, a stick by itself is called a pi bond. Now that's important, right? So sp3 has four pi bonds when it's carbon, okay? All right. All right, so if we look at sp3 here, four single bonds. Oh, I said the wrong word, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a picture of Homer down there. <laughs> when you have a single stick, that's a sigma. That's the sigma. I'm thinking ahead, right? So a sigma, four sigma bonds, sp3 if it's carbon, three sigma bonds in a lone pair, for example, for nitrogen. Fair enough. Now, let's move on. If we look at this next one here, I have one, two, three clumps. All right. That means three clumps, three atomic orbitals we use. I use my S and I only use two P, so that kind of one and two makes three, right? That makes sense. So that's a clump, that's a clump, that's a clump. That's called SP2 hybridization. Now here's the thing, this is where I got confused before. A single line is a sigma, and then the first of the double bond is a sigma, the second is a pi. So I've got one, two, three sigma, one pi. Ah, so when you start to see double bonds, the second line is a pi bond, right? Okay. All right, so let's look down here. Three sigmas and a pi. Two single bonds, one double bond. The double, if you like, is a sigma and a pi to make two sticks. Okay, so that's sp2. Fair enough. Let's look at this carbon here. This carbon looks like C and CO2, doesn't it? So this one and this one are the same environment. They both got two double bonds, right? So that's two clumps, all right? Two clumps, two clumps, an S and a P. All right, so two clumps, two atomic orbitals, S1, P1 if you like. There it is, okay? So when we do that, if I look here, let's just choose this one, right? These are both the same, SP. So we've got a sigma, a sigma, a pi, a pi. All right, so two sigma, two pi. All right, sometimes I can have, and it's not written, but for example in HCN, I can have a triple, so that's still two sigmas and still two two pi's, right? Okay, so I can have a triple and a single, two doubles, two sigma, two pi for an SP. Finally, we can do, like we did with nitrogen, the hybridization of Heteroatoms, right? So those lone pairs are there. So I've got one, two, three, four clumps, right? And the clumps count as, you know, like in nitrogen, right? So if that was nitrogen in ammonia, it'd be sp3, right? But I got one, two, three clumps, so that's sp2. Okay, so that oxygen with a double bond is s. Oh, <laughs> the oxygen with a double bond is sp2 because there's three clumps. All right, so there you go. We mostly talk about the hybridization of carbon, organic chemistry, four sticks, sp3, four atomic orbitals, three clumps, three atomic orbitals, sp2, two clumps, two atomic orbitals, sp. All right, so you're sure at some point to get like a picture of the molecule and it says, hey, what's the hybridization of this particular atom? You know, it makes sense. All right, if we do sp2 down here, that's one, two, three, so that's carbon and carbon with three sticks. Oh, three clumps, four sticks, three clumps. All right, domains four for sp3, domains three for sp2. Trigonal planar arrangement around carbon, tetrahedral arrangement around carbon. Now, this is where it gets interesting, right? We'll do, and we'll come back to this in a second, right? If we flip over, I already talked about this, yeah? I already talked about hybridization a little bit with carbon, right? Remember carbon's energy level diagram? So if I just do carbon's energy level diagram quick on the side here, right? So we had the 1s, the 2s, and the 2p, right? And when I promoted that electron up, I could make four bonds, right? Now, what happens in real life is that we don't have an electron living in an s and three electrons living in P's making separate bonds, they kind of hybridize, right? What does that mean? Well, what's a hybrid? <laughs> a mule is a hybrid, right? So you get a horse and a donkey in a stable with some Barry White music and a bottle of wine. A while later, you get a mule, <laughs> right? So it's a kind of combination of the two. So if I combine a sphere 
and three dumbbell shapes, I get, and there's a better picture below, what's called an SP3 hybrid, right? So I combine all three to make the combined shape. Okay, so let's look down here on that, how that works. Okay, so there's my P orbitals, there's my S orbitals. If I combine them, I get these kind of slightly elongated circles or scrunch P's if you like. Okay, so that's an SP3 hybrid orbital, right? It's a combination of a dumbbell and a circle and a sphere, okay? And that's how we write it, okay? So that's how we write it. Those combine to make that, well, those combine to make that, okay? So four identical orbitals which have been created by hybridizing S and P, combining them, okay? And there's a nice little picture of CH4. So there's my one, two, three, four SP3 hybrids, okay? And there's my 1S from my hydrogen, okay? And that's like a, that's a kind of a really nice way to show you how it really is with a wave diagram in molecular orbitals, right? So this is one, two, three, four molecular orbitals, all right? Okay. All right, so we're not going to dwell on hybridization. We'll leave that for biology, right? Sorry, organic chemistry. <laughs> biology, of course, is a sub-branch of organic chemistry. <laughs> All right, you can do the same thing with sp2. It's in the book, okay? But I'm just going to kind of concentrate on the one example. All right, now, now we're at the point, because we understand hybridization, we can go back to the front of the packet. Right, if you remember that front page, if I can find it, okay. Hybridization later. So maybe you can do it without peaking. We'll leave the answers underneath, right? So, hybridization. So, linear, two clumps, 180 degree bond angle, CO2, hybridization, two clumps, S and P, right? Bond types, two sigma, two pi, right? There it is, okay? So we had sort of CO2 as a classic example, right? Two double bonds, sigma, sigma, pi, pi, Two clumps, SP. All right, trigonal planar, three clumps, right? SP2. SP2, so if I think about three clumps, right? Something like that. Stick, 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 so three sigma, one pi. Okay, all right. Tetrahedral, hmm, SP2. Three, if you notice, the number of pi's is increasing, the number of sigmas is decreasing because I'm getting less multiple bonds, right? So that might be methane, right? So that's four sigma. All right. Keep going. Now, when we get to those interesting ones with more clumps, hey, guess what? Remember what we did? We promoted electrons from P, for example, up to D. So instead of an S and P boxes combining to make hybrids, now we have S, P, and D boxes combined to make hybrids. If I use one D box, five clumps, five orbitals, one S, three Ps, and I need one D, right? Okay, we get five sigma bonds, for example, all right? That'd be PCL5, for example, right? PCL5, P, one, two, three, four, five, PCL5. If I use six clumps, six boxes, SP3, D2, six pi, six, sorry, six sigma, that might be SF6, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so there's kind of the complete, I won't say cheat sheet, oh, I just did, right? So number of clumps is the same as the hybridization code, right? So two clumps, two layers, right? Three clumps, two Ps, three layers. So the number of letters is the same as the number of clumps, right? And then remember, when you do a double bond, the second line is classified as a pi. If you do a triple bond, the third line is classified as a pi. Every single bond that starts always a bond is a sigma, right? So there we go, all right. And that's kind of summarized there, okay? So I've got the hybridization and the shapes, the electronic shapes for each one. So a trigonal bipyramid is SP3 D1 hybrid, right? Octahedral is SP3 D2. So six clumps, octahedral, five clumps, trigonal bipyramid, four clumps, tetrahedral, trigonal plane of three, linear two. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. All right. Okay. I think I'm going to pause there. This is a good spot to kind of draw part one to an end, okay? So when we come back, we'll start talking about a slightly different topic, which is relative bond strength, okay? And we'll talk about also polarization, which is an important concept for your next lab, okay? <laughs> All right. So stop there, come back in a 
in the next one, okay? See you in part two.